most natural thing in the world to conceive ideas like that. It's quite, you know, there's a moment where you draw. If somebody says, look, there's a still life, there's some uh, waters with, in jugs on the table, in these carafes with some fruit, uh, draw it. And if you spend a few days with the right pencil, you could draw something absolutely magnificent. And, um, but you reach a point where it's easier for me to draw from my mind than it is to copy a still life. My life is not still life. It's absolutely a life in motion. So it's easier for me to communicate to you something which doesn't exist through drawing than it is to copy something that does. So you, for me, the act of imagination or creation or vision is for me, it's just like turning on a light switch or breathing. It's so normal. You know, if the only new things which surround us are cars or the odd flat screen television, I don't think it's really enough. And uh, this, this concept of, of, you know, we live in an age now where we have amazing materials and technologies and so on, but we're not putting them together well enough. I mean, China's doing some wonderful things, but for the number of people it's got, the number of scientists, the number of engineers, it's not actually. It's working way below its effectiveness. So, you know, it's that moment where you can see all the, po the points, but nobody's joining them, nobody's gluing it together. And it's the polymath who will be, uh, you know, the person of the 21st century, will be somebody who actually probably just sits on a chair like this and goes, did you ever think about putting that with that? Oh, no. Bang. I mean, it's incredible, isn't it? It, it, it doesn't need much. It just needs time and some kind of awareness, I think. I think the car is, is as valuable as anything else we're talking about. We can eradicate polio and, and other things, and I, it's important. But the car is killing us, and uh, in terms of its resource drawdown, its lack of efficiency, though, it's, it's ridiculous. The future of the car is probably not the car. The car will go from a self-drive status symbol to a dependable, you know, like your phone or your, or your, or your iPad, where it, you get in, it'll just take you somewhere, so you can do something. So actually productivity, global productivity, might actually be on the rise. Kids be able to learn more. I, I don't know, it's kind of interesting thought uh, that in, instead of changing the nature just of the physical object, you, you, you change the system, you know. So, I'm, you know, you pose the question, I'm in that industry, I'm, I'm designing right now, and, but I'm, I'm working way below my potential. I can't say that to Renault, and I can't say that open, openly, really, but I know it's not good enough, because it's styling over and above logic, and we're in an age where I think we need to revert back to logic and then the aesthetic will come back from that. That's why car on a stick, uh, solar trees, solar trains, windmills, other things that I adventure into as sort of serving suggestions of potential. Well, definitely a computer, because I think computers definitely need to be biological. Mm. Uh, they will. They're, they're edging that way. And anything that's biological, of course, has a beautiful birth, life, and death. That's good, so they become within a cycle, I think that has to come uh, because of the lifespan of the power of the technology. I mean, if, if anything, you know, they say fashion is six months, but they might end up saying that technology is six months because it's so fast moving. And uh, so if you want something fast moving, you need something that's a bit more organic. I mean, physically organic, I think. One innovation. Teleportation. Why? Well, it would be amazing to be able to click of the fingers and arrive somewhere. I think that would be... I mean, part of me agrees with that, part of me doesn't, but I think there are moments in time when, you know... I mean, there's a lot that goes with that, but I mean, I'd like to just 
if somebody said, you know, on the internet, it said, today is going to be the most amazing experience with Aurora Borealis. Tonight, in the whole history of the world, will be the greatest. You want to be there.